for the thank you very beautiful so ladies and gentlemen i welcome you all once again to sales mastery in god's sake of potential realtors academy so i read the profile of our tutor for tonight dr oluwoli fakunda is the md ceo of 730 real estate limited a real estate development company in the corridor of Lekki, lagos is also a co-founder at brick pine an e-commerce social marketplace is a member of the 2022 Hall of Fame as a professional chartered doctorate from, from the Chartered Institute of Public Resources Management and Politics in Ghana. Is a Pan-African delegate to Rwanda and he has contributed immensely to Pan-African initiatives, including the Youth Connect. Oluwale is the author of the best-selling sales Bible, where are my customers? Oluwale has trained over 10,000 young Africans in sales who have thereafter recorded massive results through selling. He's a sociologist by academic training and entrepreneur, inspirational and mindful young leader. He's keenly passionate about youth and community development. He recently graduated with distinction from the International School of Estate and Business, where he further studied the evolving dynamics of the real estate industry, tutored by world-class seasoned professionals. He is currently an executive OMP student at the prestigious Lagos Business School, LBS. He's a TEDx speaker and a recipient of the 2023 Young Entrepreneurs International Award. Oluwole is a hardworking Nigerian whose vision and drive for life are worthy of emulation. Ladies and gentlemen, Odisha Realtors Academy, please, can we please celebrate our tutor for tonight? No other person than Dr. Hamilton as he takes the floor tonight. You're welcome, sir. It's nice to have you join us tonight. Yeah, thank you very much. Good evening, guys. Um, yeah, um, it's amazing to be here. And um, yeah, thank you for having me. And we're going to be having an amazing time. Right. Um, if you can hear me, please let me know. If you can hear me, let me know. If you can hear me, just let me know in the comment section that you can hear me. Yeah. Can you guys hear me? All right. Yeah, all right. Yeah. All right. They are completing the chat box. Right. Yeah. All right. All right. All right. All right. Perfect. All right, guys. So, um, when I joined, I joined earlier, actually. I was hearing, I mean, I saw when you guys wrote that you, you're going to make billions in 2023 and, um, and all of that. I love it. I love the energy. But in real estate, there is a saying that if you are going to build a castle in the air, the foundation has to be on land. This is to emphasize the importance of land. If you want to build a castle in the air, the foundation has to be on land. So if you want to make that billions that you have spoken about, you have to be able to go to the Nambi Pambi of sales and um, get you to the end of it. Tonight, I'm going to be teaching you how to sell, basically. I'm not going to be, oh, um, the session yesterday, there were a lot of figures that have been mentioned. I did not mention a lot of figures today. But guys, I'm going to be teaching you how to make those figures. I'm going to be teaching you how to make those, those figures. And um, I've been in the real estate industry now for about seven years. So I'm going to be sharing with you from my experience and also from the things that I've learned over the years. And I would encourage that if you do not have the writing material, this may be a good time to get one. All right, our time is already fast spent. So I'm not going to make, um, waste much of your time. Now, it is important before we go into real estate sales training that we understand the, the, the foundation of what we are talking about. For example, if I want to train people to sell cars, the approach is going to be different, right? But when it comes to real estate sales, real estate sales is one of the best places you can be in life. Let me tell you a story. Um, some, some five years ago, some five years ago, I read this in the newspaper of a guy who was arrested. This guy, this guy went, so he goes into a bank every day. So this guy works. He will go into a bank, meet with the audience in the banking hall, go to the restroom, and when, um, when the bank closes, 
he locks himself up in the less in the restroom so the bank closes and then um over the night this guy would he would go to the counter and i mean steal some money not so much money right just a few thousands to, to pass by he would steal some money put them in his bag stay in the restroom in fact the day he was arrested he was caught in the roof he was caught in the roof of the bank so he, but he has been doing this time and time again he will meet with the audience during the day lock himself in the bank or in the toilet when they close he comes out does what he wants to do he has he knows where the cameras are he knows how to avoid those cameras and all of that and um the next morning when the bank resumes and people come into the bank he mixes with the audience again and he comes out so that has been his model of robbing so he doesn't rob big money like that he just comes in with a handbag take a few thousands of stuff and when this guy was arrested he was asked that this money that you steal from the bank is the money you could have worked for this money that you steal from the bank sorry they just took out my light but my ring light, my ring light is saving us <laughs> the the power will be restored shortly so this money that you rob in banks is the money you can work for right so why is it that you always go to the bank to take this money and this guy says something he said with anywhere else i'm not certain if there is money but when it comes to the bank i know that is where the money is hmm. thinking about the story it resuscitates the fact that you being in real estate sales reemphasizes that this is where the money is guys see from time immemorial when god wants to bless a man he blesses the man with land land has always been a blessing and the fact that you are in the business of selling land, you will never go out of business. Because you are in an industry that people constantly and consistently would need. So now, for you to be able to sell land successfully, you need to understand what you are selling. You need to understand what you are selling. You know, I see a lot of realtors post, sell and um, buy generational wealth, do this, do that. But really, you need to understand the conceptualization of real estate. Some of you may ask that what do i define real estate to be real estate is defined as land real estate is defined as Can you hear me, guys? Yes. Can you hear me, guys? Yes. But the tutor. Um, I think uh, probably our, our, our tutor is trying to reconnect. It could be the network or something. Okay, thank you. Can you guys hear me now? Yeah, we okay. can hear you. Yes, can you can hear you, sir. Somebody said village people are saying. Yes, we can hear you. All right, sorry about that. That was a glitch my internet. All right, so. You need to understand the conceptualization of what real estate is. So what is real estate? Guys, write it down. Real estate is land. Real estate is land. Um, can you guys hear me clearly? Can anyone hear me clearly? I can hear you, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Can we yes. hear our tutor, please? Let us know in the chat box, please. Yes, I can hear you, sir. We can hear you. Can you guys hear me clearer now? Yes, we can, can hear can you. Go ahead, can I hear you, sir? Is it clearer now? Is it clearer now? All right, perfect. All right, perfect. So, real estate, real estate is land. Real estate is land. 
real estate is land. Now, real estate is land. Anything attached to me and anything under it. Real estate is land. Anything attached to me and anything under it. So you can meet you if you're not talking. Real estate is land. Anything attached to it. Oh, I think the network from. Can we hear me, guys? Um, can we all hear me, please? Yeah, yes, we can hear you. Please let me know in the chat. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, I, can hear you. Thank you. I think our tutor is trying to reconnect. Our tutor is trying to reconnect. I think his network is kind of um, heavy back now. So he's, he's going to join us very shortly. Let's keep sharing the link with our friends so we can have more people join us tonight. Let's share the link with our friends. And the, the, it's currently streaming on YouTube as well. And the link has been shared in the community as well. Please ensure that you're streaming live it should in case you also have some network. <laughs> Village people follow some people to this meeting today. <laughs> I thought you guys were going to actually be an amazing me. night tonight. Welcome, sir. Yes, perfectly. I can hear you so well. Welcome, sir. Yeah. Please let us know if you can hear our tutor for tonight, please. We can hear you. Please. Please let us let us appeal okay, to the village people. Please keep it. Keep we, it we are trying to get to yeah, we can hear you. Yeah, we can hear you, sir. Thank you. All right, please you can meet yourself. You can please, let's meet yourself. ourselves, please. You can please. meet yourself. Thank please. you. My... All right. All right. I think that we should appeal to some people's village people and tell them that please, we are trying, we are trying to get out of poverty here. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody said real estate people, please. All right, so real estate is land. Real estate is land, anything attached to it and anything underneath. Real estate is land, anything attached to it and anything underneath. So please, going forward, I don't know if it's from my end or your end, Mr. Adigo, um, the, the, the app keeps telling me each time it drops, it tells me something goes wrong, um, something went wrong, kindly join back. Something like that. So please help me look into it if it's probably from your hand or mine. All right. So as I was saying, right, real estate is land. Anything attached to hands of man, three needs of man. He said shelter, clothing, and food. Okay, somebody said network is bad. Is that my network? I'll show it to your network because I can hear you perfectly from here. Probably it could be the person's network. You yes, can go ahead, sir. Can go ahead. You can hear it perfectly, right? Yeah, I can hear you so clearly, sir. All right, all right. So as I was saying, I said, Abraham Maslow highlighted the importance or the needs of man. And he mentioned shelter, food, and clothes. Let me ask you. Let me ask you. Shelter, food, and clothing. Which one do you think is most important? Shelter, food, and clothing. Which one is most important? Food, food. Okay, somebody said shelter. <laughs> somebody said food. You can just type. You can just type in the comment section. You can just type in the comment section. That person is a foodie. Somebody said everything. Somebody said food. Oh. <laughs> somebody said food. Food. Shelter is more important. Shelter, shelter, shelter. All right. Because of our time, because of our time, let me break it down. Food is very important to man. Because without food, you will not grow. That is why there's something called kwashioko. Without nutritious food, people will not grow. Somebody even said water. Water is important. Food is very important. Right? But as I'm coming there. Now let's talk about clothing. Clothing is important. You need to cover your, naked, your nakedness. But guys, let me tell you something. If you have a fundamental knowledge that real estate is the most important thing, need of mine, you will pitch your product differently to your customers. And I'll explain to you. When it comes to food and clothing, you can choose when to do without them. You can decide to fast for 40 days and 40 nights, like Jesus did. That is you choosing 
not to, you, are, you can choose not to engage food for a period of time. Are you with me? You can choose not to engage clothes for a period of time. If you want to have your bath, for example, you can't have your bath with your clothes on, right? So you can choose not to engage clothes at some point. You can choose not to en engage food at some point. But the only thing that you cannot choose when to engage is real estate. If you are having your bath in your bathroom naked, it is in a real estate. Hello? Some people have told me in, in the past that what if you take a flight? Guys, if you take a flight and you fly for 100 hours, what is that plane going to do at the end of the day? Oh, I heard somebody say it's going to land. Hello? It's going to what? It's going to land. So no matter where exactly it will land, this is to emphasize that real estate is too important. Because at no given point, can you choose when to engage real estate or not? You cannot decide not to engage real estate at any point. People we always need places to work, places to eat, places to go, places to go on dates, places to people are always going to need places. There is nothing happening without places. Look at when COVID happened. COVID happened and all of us had to be in our houses. Tonight, we are having a virtual call. People will say, eh, yes, I mean, um, people can do meetings virtually. People no longer need offices. They can now work virtually. No matter where you are watching me from tonight, you are in a real estate. Look around you. Real estate is everywhere. Somebody once said that real estate is the father of all investments. And agriculture is his first son. Now, agriculture produces food. It means that even food is from real estate. Clothes are made from produce of the farm. Even clothes is from real estate. What am I trying to establish here? I'm trying to establish the fact that real estate is too important to be ignored. The people that own the real estate of today will become the landlords of tomorrow. You know, there was a time I had food. I ate food somewhere on the mainland in Lagos. I ate food somewhere on the mainland in Lagos. And um, let's assume that I ate this ate the same set of food for 5,000 Naira. By the time I came to the island, I ate the same food for 18,000 Naira. That is 13,000 Naira difference. What do you think I paid for? I paid for real estate. I paid for real estate. So many people are paying for real estate, but they are not paying for real estate for themselves. Ne Village people really came to this class today. But the devil is a liar. <laughs> what did I pay for there? I paid for real estate. There is nothing you do that will be outside of real estate. There is no way you want to do it. The clothes you are paying for, you are paying for real estate. If you have an office, you are going to factor your rent, you know, in financial management. I'm currently taking a course in Lagos Business School, and they're teaching us a lot about financial management and all of that. When it comes to pricing, they are fixed assets. There are things that you need to factor. There are things you need to factor in when determining your prices. Your fixed asset is part of them. You are definitely going to need places to do anything. So real estate cannot be overlooked. It can never be overlooked. When you tell people from this point of view, buying real estate is no longer an advice. It's urgent. Is a requirement. Is a requirement. So making sure. Now, most times salespeople, I realize that salespeople are the best people that give themselves excuses. Salespeople have excuses every time. They will give excuse for their customer. They will give excuse for everything. They will give excuse as to why they are not having results. For some of you that have read my book, I've said it in my book that the first time I came to Lagos, I came to Lagos as a houseboy. And I love to say that the houseboy that, that came to Lagos now sell lands and houses. So no matter where you are coming from, you can sell real estate. Oh, some people will say, you know, I'm just shy. I'm just, this same person talking to you right now, I used to be a stammerer from 10, 15 years ago. I used to be a stammerer. But I told myself that if I'm going to sell my vision to the world, I need to know how to talk. So you cannot excuse your way out of life. And if you have found yourself in this space, you need to take it seriously. 
You need to take real estate as though your life depends on it because it does. You need to take real estate seriously as though your life depends on it because it does. And guess what? Is it that you are selling or you are buying? Is it that you are selling or you are buying? Some of you keep hustling for your landlords. That man probably bought that land many years ago. And today he's still earning rent. He's still earning rental values after many years. Some people didn't even earn it. Just ignore my lights. Just focus on me. <laughs> Some people didn't even earn it directly. They inherited the property from their fathers. It means that generational wealth is not just gimmicks to get people to buy land. It's a real thing. It's a real thing. It's a real thing. So now, having that understanding that real estate is too important to be ignored, I'm not going to take you to how you can sell. Now, not just how you can start selling. Because many salespeople, they start selling, but they stop selling. In real estate, you cannot afford to be a locational salesperson. A locational salesperson is that person who just sells real estate one, once or twice. You just sell real estate by chance. An intentional salesperson is somebody who sales is his lifestyle. I love to tell salespeople this. You are not into real estate. Real estate is in you. If you see it that way, you will learn more industry knowledge, product knowledge, and closing every client will be a mandate to you. Um, the, the CEO of Odisha um, Properties, we worked at the same company. His first car was a black Corolla. My first car was a black Corolla. I see how far we have come with real estate. Real estate. So you have a future in real estate if you can sell like crazy. Brasekoni can sell anything. He can sell water to, to, to well. He can sell ice to Eskimo. As a salesperson, you don't just have financial freedom. You have financial confidence. You don't just have financial freedom. You have financial confidence. Because if I need to buy this table water, the money for this table water is, is in the hands of one of my customers. I just need to locate the customer, collect his money to come and buy land, and I collect the commission to buy the water. Oh, my God. I've not even gone into my teaching. I love to tell salespeople to always set goals. Set ambitious goals. Set audacious goals. Because if you've told yourself about that by the end of 2023, you must buy a certain type of car. Every customer you talk to become an opportunity for you to buy that car. It means that if somebody is saying no to you, you go to the next person. Because your aim is not the customer who will not buy. Your aim is the customer that will buy. Because in every customer's pocket is your money to buy that car. And guess what? If you don't set goals, you won't achieve any. Goals are only achieved when they are set. If you don't set it, you won't achieve it. If you don't set it, you won't achieve it. I'm going to my training now. I'm going to my training now. I'm going to my training now. Some of you are not even hungry enough. I don't know why I'm going in this direction. You are not hungry enough to sell. Let me say this before I go into my training. I tell my salespeople this. If you have given yourself 10 million naira target in a month, listen to this. Listen to this. If you have given yourself 10 million naira target in a month and you were only able to sell 1 million, are you with me? Are you with me? You are only able to sell 1 million. Do you know now if your commission is 10%, on that 1 million, you are going to earn 100,000. Am I right or am I right? Am I correct? If your commission is 10% on your 1 million sale, you will earn 100,000. Am I right? Please, I want you to engage me. Good. Now, Let's imagine that Odisha properties give you that commission. The moment they pay that commission, you go to a POS to withdraw the cash because you need that cash. Listen to this. Listen to this. You go and withdraw that cash because you need it. When you withdraw the cash, you put it in your bag. Let's say you took an Uber, right? You took an Uber from your office to your house. The moment you get to your house, you realize that somewhere along the way, they have stolen that 100,000 100, from you. How will you feel? How will you feel? The 100K that you earned as commission from selling 1 million. How will you feel if you misplace it? How will you feel? Come on, guys, guys. 
By now, I don't want you to do anything else. I want you to be on your phone and responding to me. You see, I could have killed a lot. <laughs> what are you going to do? You'll be so bad, right? You'll be so sad. Yes, good. I love it. Somebody even said, ah, my God, you're going to be sad. Now, wait, pause there. Do you know that that month, you have not lost 100,000? That month, you have lost 900,000 because your target was 10 million and you left 9 million on the table. You were only able to achieve 1 million. Your target was 10 million and you left 9 million on the table. For every day you don't sell, you are leaving money on the table. For every day you don't sell, you are leaving money on the table. See, the moment you begin to see it this way, you understand what I'm saying. The last time I was in Qatar, I was, I realized that everywhere you go, there are salespeople. And guess what? I bought a lot of things I did not need. Because people that sold it to me were sellers. They were salespeople. Have you bought something in traffic before that you didn't need? For everybody, for every day you don't sell, you leave money on the table. You leave money on the table. As the clock is clocking, some of you, a lot of salespeople give a lot of excuses. And it's because of this, because of that. Enter the streets. The, the street of Lagos is paved with gold, if you see it. People have money they are not using. People have money they don't need. People have money they want to buy it, they're only looking for who to trust. But the problem is that you don't even talk to everybody about what you do. Some of you are shy. You cannot be shy and broke. You have to choose one. You have to choose one. If you are shy, go and trust your CV and start the 9 to 5. When I pay you 50k monthly and stick to it. Don't come and say let's say where you earn commission. You are the only limit to what you can earn. You are the only limit to what you can earn. You are the only limit to what you can earn. Let me go on from here. Let me go into my training. Rudiment of real estate sales. Number one, the first thing is lead generation. The first thing is lead generation. The first thing in real estate sales is lead generation. Because, let me pick somebody here. I can see a favor here. I can see a favor here. Let me assume that favor was married. If favor was married, good. Thank you for writing it down. Watch sure. If favor was married, and I'm interested in favor, and I keep telling favor the right things. I like favor so much. I keep telling favor I love you. I keep buying favor gifts. I keep doing everything I'm supposed to do to be able to get the lady's attention. Do you know that the day I realize that she's married is the day I will realize that I've been talking to the wrong audience? Guys, everything else I'm going to be saying today, if you don't get this lead generation right, you are going to just be talking to the wrong audience. Some of you are not talking to prospects. You're only talking to suspects. Oh, my God. There are some people that are not your prospects. They are just suspects. They look like it, but they are not it. They look like it, but they are not it. Some people just love the idea that you are talking to them about real estate. And they will keep posting you. They will just keep posting you. They will just keep posting you. A customer that is ready, willing to buy, is a customer that we pay. Most times they will not even stress you. Now, you also need to be able to, 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 to separate between your prospect for now and your prospect for later. Some people are not your prospect for now. They are your prospect for later. There is an entire teaching I have on rearing prospects. You know the way you rear dog and you rear cat? You can rear prospects. But I don't want to diversify tonight. You can rear your prospect to a stage of maturity that by the time they are ready to buy real estate, you are the only name in their mind. That is called rearing. That is how that is how you are going to build a very loyal clientele that will not buy real estate from anyone else but you. Lead generation. If you don't generate your leads right, you will only sell to those that are left. Now, there are several ways you can, have, you can generate um, leads. You can use online, you can use code code. But I'm going to be giving you these principles that work. They work like magic. The first thing, I explained it in my book. 
is the power of the people you know. I once lost a transaction to, to my colleague. My colleague brought my neighbor into the office and sold to my neighbor. She met my neighbor at the restaurant. She met my neighbor at the restaurant and sold to him. Every day of my life, when I'm coming from work, I always see this man in front of his house. He will greet me and say, fine boy, Bowney. I will greet him and say, Era, sir. I never knew he was my prospect. Somebody met him at the restaurant and he bought the property of 13 million. In my mind, I told myself, if only I had come down one day to tell this man that I sell real estate. That is how some of you are. You know these people, but you've not spoken to them. You think that is my lecturer, is my uncle. So I started selling real estate as an undergraduate. And guys, I sold to my lecturers. I sold real estate to my lecturers. The principle of the power of the people you know is to talk about real estate to everybody you know. Now, because I used to be a teacher and I love to give assignments, I'm going to give you an assignment tonight. And the assignment is what I call 91 call approach. 91 call approach after this call don't wait till tomorrow write down the first 19 names on your contact list don't exclude one even if it's your pastor even if it's your imam even if it's your ex don't exclude one write down the first 90 names call them tomorrow when you are done with the 90 names write the next 90 names until you exhaust your contact list everybody you know should know you sell real estate except you are still treating real estate like a side hustle if they are in your life and they are not supposed to know you sell real estate, they should not know you. Anybody that knows me and doesn't want to know I sell real estate or thinks that my own is too much, that person is not supposed to know me to begin with. Oh my God. If this does not work, if, if you can practice everything I'm telling you tonight, in the next one week, if you don't have results, if you don't have results, I wanted to say, I will remove doctor from my name. Guys, talk to everybody you know. Dada, I see you. Amazing guy. Dada, I see you. Hello, what do you say? Talk to everybody you know. There is nobody that knows you. That you not know you sell real estate. That's the first thing. This 99 one call I just told you, it's going to be an, an awareness call. Your aim is not to close. But if closing comes, you take it. Your aim is to make sure that everybody you know knows what you are doing. Um, In advanced level marketing, there's something we call top of the mind approach. It's a top of the mind approach. It keeps you at the mind of people. When anybody talks about real estate around them, you are the one that will come to mind. I was, somebody once referred a rich enemy to me. I'm not even capping. She told me that, Mr. Wale, there's this man in my office. I don't like him, but I want him to buy land from you. And she gave me the man's number. When I called the man, I said, hello, sir. Victoria gave me your number. The man said, that girl, she's not serious. So apparently, two of them don't even like each other. But I told him about real estate, and today is my customer. If your top of the mind game is legit, people are going to refer you to their friends, their family, and even their rich enemies. That's the power of the people you know. Now let's talk about referrals. That's the power of the people your people know. The power of the what? The power of the people your people know. Some of you may not know the direct people that can buy land from you right now, but you know people that know those people. Hello? You Hi. know those people that know those people. All you need to do sometimes as a realtor is to share commission. Tell a friend and say we will share commission 50-50. Because if that friend never brought that transaction, you will have nothing. Them. In fact, that was how I got into real estate. I was an undergraduate, and my mentor told me that if you can sell, we share commission 50-50. I sold like a madman. I sold my first 8.3 million as an undergraduate. By the time I was I was graduating, I was balling. 
boiling. I was boiling. Maybe I was a teacher before then. People were just wondering that. But what about all the shaking? The power of the people your people know. This is the power of referrals. Now, many times, when people refer you, this is what I'm going to say. When people refer you, make sure they participate in the referral process. Somebody wants to give you a number, let the person call the person. This is what it does. If you ask somebody to give you a referral, they will just give you a number, and when you call the person, and the person now calls them back, they will say, that girl, she sells real estate, Jerry, what? Just, just give our attention. But if they are calling the person in your presence, they will tell the person, oh, they will most likely put in good words. They will most likely put in good words. So when asking for referrals, make sure that you get people, the referee, to engage in the referral process. Am I making sense? The power of the people your people know. The third way to generate leads The third way to generate leads is the power of the people you don't know. William Swartworth once said that there are no strangers. There are only friends you are yet to meet. There are no strangers. There are only friends you are yet to meet. How many of you have met somebody new and it automatically feels like you've known them for long? It can be that simple. Guys, strangers pay me every day. I'll be honest with you. Strangers pay me every day. As a salesperson, consciously carve where you go to. Stop going to, ah, you want to go and hang out. You are going somewhere inside the Kurodu or somewhere in your ball. No. Hang out in places where the people that are your customers, where they hang out. The people that are your customers, hang out where they hang out. Join a community. Collect one commission and dedicate that commission. That this commission, I want you to join a long tennis club. Join a gym. Do something. On a Monday morning, go to the gym. You can tell that whoever is in the gym on a Monday morning has money. They are either two. Is either he's very broke or he has plenty of money. If you are the gym on a Monday morning, you have money. You are my customer. That means some people are working for you somewhere. Or you are a tech bro. Join communities. I see that realtors go to all events. Guys, calm down. Stop going to events that the people you will meet are realtors. Go to events that the people you will meet are customers. Are you not tired of knowing realtors? I tell my realtors this a lot. If you know more, if you have more realtors on your contact list than customers, stop meeting realtors for now. So once you meet somebody and, and they are a realtor, thank you, God bless you. I don't need your number. Stop meeting customers. Stop meeting. Your aim is not to build a realtor's portfolio. It's to build a customer's portfolio. Stop meeting realtors. Kilo she, kilo de, some people were, eh? if they show you their contact, realtor, wale, realtor, kudus, realtor, this, realtor, that. You want to sell to realtors? You want to sell to realtors? No, now. Are you going to sell to realtors? Is every realtor number you have? Go and look for customers. Every day after work, there's something I used to do when I was an employee. Every day after work, I used to go to Ebano supermarket in Chevron. I would just go and even if it's a table water I'm buying or a bottle of this thing, I would just pick it and put it in my basket. I'm just walking around. Although there was a day that security bounced me out, child. When they saw that I was talking to everybody. But I learned from the process. Talk to people. I met customers there. I met customers there. I just spoke like one of my lecturers. I met customers here. I met customers there. Don't just go home and just sleep and tomorrow is another day. Remember what I said earlier, that you are not into real estate. Real estate is in you. Sales is not what you do. Sales is who you are. Stop playing it safe, guys. Sales is not what you do. Sales is who you are. You are doing sales like is a, ah, you are just doing it. If he comes, if he doesn't come, every day I walk like a madman, even though I'm still, even though I'm the MD. My sales people are my sales people are not normal. My sales people are they are always on their toes. Because I don't even sell one plot. I can't remember how I sold one plot. When I'm talking to somebody to sell one plot, in sales, there's something called power of suggestion. 
when somebody wants to buy one plot, I encourage them to buy two. They will say, why? I will say, because in future, when you want to build on this land, you could just sell one plot and use it to build on the other one. You won't take out of your active income. They will nod and say, nice idea. They will buy two. I say, even if I were you, I will buy three or four. So that even if you need to sell one quickly, you won't be selling the only land you have. All of this comes from you seeing sales as who you are, not just what you do. Sell like a madman, guys. Sell like your life depends on it before you, because it does. Because it does. So yeah, I've spoken about the people you know, the people your people know, and the people you don't know. Meet new people. Meet new people. Go out and sell. Go out and sell. Stop staying your house. Go out and I have some salespeople. They're always going out at night. And I like them for it. Sometimes they even call me that they're coming late in the morning. That's fine. As long as you are selling and they are meeting targets. Go to their club and bring customers. Go out and look for customers. You cannot be emotional about life. Your bills are not emotional. Whether you like it or not, you are sent with deal. <laughs> Whether you like it or not, you are sent with deal. And as a real estate salesperson, I don't even want you to start. I don't want you to be living life based on just what you need or survivor. As a real estate salesperson, you have an abundance. 2024 is about to start. Ask yourself, from your commission, how many people do you want to pay their school fees? Just pick random people and pay their school fees. You, you don't need to know them. Pick people and pay their school fees. Buy food stuff for students. But even you, you never chop because you never sell. Where, where? Guys, go and sell. Oh. Go and sell. So that's mid generation. The second thing I'm going to be talking about is engagement. Many of you, you've attracted a fine lady, is now out to engage her. That's when you start stammering. That's when you don't know what to do. Engagement is literally you sustaining a conversation. Number two is engagement. So now, when it comes to engagement, you know I mentioned I used to be a teacher. I'll give you a lot of acronyms, right? The rule of engagement is S-S-A-L-T. If you, if, you, if you cut that, write it in the comment section. S-S-A-L-T. S-S-A-L-T. Write it in the comment section. Oh, yeah, child. Thank you. I didn't care. Oh, I have a day. Thank, thank you. I love you. Thank you. Thank you. S-S-A-L-T. The first S stands for start conversation. You have met somebody. You've collected their card. By the way, when you're meeting a stranger, Never ask for a stranger's phone number. It shock you. Never ask for a stranger's phone number. Uluwatoni is looking like, ah, I should not ask for phone number. What should I now do? Never ask for a stranger's phone number. When you meet someone new, let me tell you what it looks like when I'm prospecting, when I meet somebody new. This is what I say. Hello, sir, good afternoon. Hi, good afternoon. You know, they're like, oh, okay. Hi, good afternoon. And I'm like, I'm sorry, my name is Wally. And I work with, even if you are just a realtor, mention a company's name. It solidifies trust. People, people will buy into you, but they will trust your company. They are buying you, but it's your company they are trusting. Because they can't sue you. It's your company they are buying land from. So my name is Wally. My name is Wally. Um, I work with 730 Real Estate, an office is a Chevron Lagos. They're like, oh, okay, all you real estate people. The moment people hear that you, you do real estate, the first thing they will say is, what is real estate people? So this is what I do. So I'm a, I do real estate. They will say, all oh, these real estate people. I will say, honestly, somebody will be like, Real estate investor, what do they look like? And I'll say something. You are either renting a place.
So can we all hear me, guys? I think the let's pop from the head of our tutor is kind of bad. Can we all hear? Okay, good. It's bad. Uh, did I go off before? Can you guys hear me now? Yes. Can you guys hear you, me now? You're back on line, sir. You're back on line, sir. You can go ahead, sir. All right. All right. Thank you, sir. All right. All right. Some people's village people came here today. We need to bind them by fire. All right. So, the moment I meet somebody, I tell them they look like real estate investors to me, and they ask me questions that what do they look like? I create the urgency myself. I say, it may not be a good place to talk. Do you mind giving me your card? When you ask people for their card, even if they don't have the if they don't have a card, they will suggest to give you their number. But if you ask for number directly, how many of you will feel weird? If somebody just come to you and say, "Please, can I have your number?" You will feel weird, like data protection. A Nigerian mindset will just go as to, "Ah, my number, Do you get? But if you ask for card, daily energy says that if you put people on the pedestal to live up to, they will live up to it. So you ask for somebody's card, they don't have a card, they will suggest to give you their number. They will be they will willingly go and try it out. If it does not work, I will remove doctor from my name. <laughs> go and try it out. Ask people for their card, they will be the one to suggest to give you their number. And plenty of people in Nigeria don't have card. They will say, Ah, oh, I'm not my card, but I can give you my number. So I did it to you exactly. That person has probably attended my class before or read my book. <laughs> all right so now when somebody gives you their card there's something called the business card ethics many times when people give you when people give you so i said immediately somebody says oh all these real estate people just say oh yes um i have an offer that will catch your interest and um no the moment somebody says all these real estate people just that oh yes that they look like a real estate investor to you the moment they ask, what do they look like? You say, I know you've probably rented a place or bought a place or something. They'll say, oh, that means everybody's a real estate investor. Before you now tell them you have an offer they can't reject. Oh, what's the offer? It may not be a good place to talk. You might give me your card. That is, um, I will get there by the time I'm talking about conversion, right? That, that, that is the act of arousing curiosity. If you say something like that, you've arose their curiosity. Now they want to hear what you have to say. Right, then you fix a meeting or something, something where you now get to close them. Are you with me? So, I was talking about the, biz the business card rule. I don't know if I'm a business card here. The business card rule, many times, when people give you their business card, you just put it in your pocket or you just um, put it in the pocket of your suit or something. Salespeople, when people give you their business card, look at it for five seconds. Even if the business card is ugly. It's a business card rule. When people give you their business card, look at it for five minutes or five seconds. Look at it, give a commentary. You can say, amazing name. Oh, you're the director. Oh, is it the one in Ikeja? If, if you have nothing to say about the content, talk about the card. I like the card, it's, it's soft. It's easy to, you get, that's the business card rule. When people meet at elite events, I mean, World Bank CEOs, when they meet, people look at, they are intentional about every detail, right? So look at the business card and go on from there. So yeah, the first S is start conversation. You've met this person, you've collected their card or something. Be the one to start conversation. Be the one to start conversation. Don't wait for them to start conversation with you. A lot of people network with me and they are sending me a message on WhatsApp. They're saying, hello, sir. Do you expect me to reply to you, hello, sir? Now nah, that's not going to work. Come here, say what you have to say. That's what will even make me determine if I want to save your number or not. So, start, always start conversation. Always start conversation. Now, in explaining SSALT, I will give you another formula. How many of you know Corolla? The car Corolla. If you know Corolla, type I know Corolla. That Corolla. That, that, that one that Mr. Bright bought that year. If you know Corolla, type I know Corolla. Good, good. All right. So, oh, all right, all right. So, I'm not talking about Corolla. I want to talk about Ford. How many of you know Ford? 
I bought car. Yes, I bought the same Gorilla. How long have you known Ford? F O R D. F O R D. F O R D. You know Ford. Good. Good. All right. All right. So we are going to be using Ford as an instrument to explain SSALT. Are we good? We are going to be using Ford to explain SSALT. So start conversation. Start conversation around these things. In Ford, F is for family. People like to talk about their family or the family. If they don't like the family they are in, they like to talk about the kind of family they love to have. If they don't like the family they are in, they like to talk about the kind of family they wish they had. So F is for family. O is for occupation. O is for occupation. People love to talk about what they do. If they don't love what they do, they love to talk about what they wish they were doing. People love to talk about occupation. If they don't love what they do, they love to talk about what they wish they were doing. So something like this. Oh, I saw your card that you are the envy of Marriott. Wow, that's amazing. I mean, I think I've lodged there once or twice and something. Oh, yeah, we, 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 we give excellent services. Do we get them talking about themselves? The rule of engagement is to get people to talk about themselves more. The rule of engagement is to get people to talk about themselves more, especially customers. Are you with me? So, family. I closed one of my clients because I was talking to him and I noticed his mind was not with me. And then I asked him, I said, sir, what is the most important thing to you right now? And he said to me, he said, Mr. Wally, I just really want my family to be good. And I want my son to be set up for life. Immediately said that I had an idea, but I didn't share it with him immediately. I didn't want it to feel really like we asked. The next morning I called him and I said, that called him when I sent a voice note. I said, I was pondering on what you told me yesterday. And I was thinking that we can set up your son for life by buying him one plot every year. By the time he's 18, you will give him all the land documents. The one you bought for him when he was one, if it was one million, I'm sure it will be nothing less than 18 million. Now consider the remaining 17. It means that you have used today's convenience to secure tomorrow's future of that boy. Do you think that's a good idea? So the guy is a worry boy. He immediately told me, Chat, it's only just, you just wise anyhow. You just shoo, how you take this thing so? I love the way they think these things. I love the way they think these things. I love the way they think these things. How do they think these things? And I'm talking to you, the boy is just two. And I bought him four properties. The boy is just two. And I bought him four properties. Anytime I need sale. I was my guy, you did now. That's your boy. She will go on to him portfolio like <laughs> And the guy will be like, Mr. Lee, don't come again. I think, how do you think they feel? How you take the few? See that boy just get property. Nah, nah. He said, my brother. You know, sometimes I know you can they think retirement again. I told the reason I say this boy don't they say to for life. I don't go need worry about that. <laughs> that wow. is family. So yeah, all his occupation. People like to talk about what they do, right? It's like um, there is there's somebody I met recently, and um, she told me so. As we met, the first question she asked me is, what do you do? And also, I recommend that to salespeople. When you're prospecting and you meet somebody randomly, after you get their name, the next thing you should ask them is, what do they do, right? When somebody asks me, what do I do? In my mind, I'll be like, ah, you will need jot out <laughs> because you want to know what I do. After I tell you what I do, you will do transfer. <laughs> after I tell you what I do, you will do transfer. You get So people like to talk about what they do. Then the R in Ford is recreation. You can start conversation around recreation, depending on where you met that person. Um, you can start conversation around the gym. You can say, oh, I love to. In fact, sometimes to start a meeting sometimes, I get to ask that, oh, sir, I checked your social media. I think I'm very serious. I would like to ask, what do you do when you're not working? So I'm starting a conversation from recreation. Please tell me, oh, he plays golf and all of that. And as a, as a salesperson, this also speaks to the fact that you need to be widely read. You need to know a lot of things, right? For example, I'm not a football fan, but I know a lot. I know a lot about football, right? So I can hold a conversation about football, right? I don't play golf yet, but I know a lot about golf playing, right? So I can give instances. I can talk about football. So you can be a conversationalist, right? So you can engage people based off 
um, um, recreation, what they do when they are not working, right? Then the last thing is dreams. The D in four is dreams. Every time you want to sell, this particularly works for real estate because you can, you see football is for us, guys. <laughs> Every time you want to talk about real estate, always connect people to their dreams. Always connect. The reason why we tell people um, you, are, you are investing in your future, you are creating generational wealth, is because you are connecting them, connect the present them to their future self, right? Connect the, their present self to their future self. That's dreams, right? Talk about how your products can help them become a multi-millionaire. How that landmark. Don't just say, um, you know, many times I see a lot of readers, they just talk about um, it's close to this university, it's close to why is the university proximity an advantage? That's what you should talk about. Somebody wants to sell a two bedroom and you're saying, I'm here to show you a two bedroom. Now, follow me. They will follow you and you enter the two bedroom and say, this is the sitting room. This is the toilet. My question is, is he not supposed to have sitting room? Is he not supposed to have toilet? He's supposed to have toilet, of course. But you should do content that connects people to the 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 importance of that location to the so talk about their dreams how that dream is going or how that product is going to help them achieve their dreams for example i wasn't a fan of brand influencing because anytime i launch a product is sold out anytime i launch a product is sold out but somebody successfully sold the idea of brand influencing to me because basically connected it to my dreams so you know it gives your business visibility it does this it does that so somehow Connect your product to people's dreams. Connect your product to people's dreams, right? So yes, start conversation. The second S is smile. People of God, smile. Even as you're on this call right now, shine your teeth, smile. Smile, guys. See, either you're on a call, you're on a video call, you're on a phone call, always smile. It radiates. See, when you are talking to somebody on the phone and you are smiling, hello, sir. So, yes, we have this product in it where it radiates. And you see, sales is sales is where I love it, favor. <laughs> sales is when people, you see, you're conf if you are confident, people will have confidence in you. If you are confident, people will have confidence in you. And it's an energy. Sales is transference of energy. You, a salesperson, what happens most times is, Let's say you just spoke to somebody and the person gave you a no. When the person gives you a no, you will not take that no energy to the next transaction. Guys, what I do a lot is I stand up and I pace around. If I'm not in the right frame of mind, please mute yourself. If I'm not in the mind, if I'm not in the right frame of mind, I, I, I pace around a little bit before I make the next call so that I'm come, I'm with renewed energy. Hello, sir. Good afternoon. And people will always say no. As a salesperson, we chop no as breakfast. Some will, some will. So what? Someone is waiting. <laughs> Someone is waiting. No is normal. No means next opportunity. Yes, if you're confident, people have confidence in you. So smile. No matter the problem in your family house, smile. Guys, see, some of the ways, there's a video by um, um, Leonardo DiCaprio that I love so much in the book, Way of the Wolf or in the movie Way of the Wolf, he said, I want you to deal with your problems by becoming rich. The weight of a problem can be lighter if you have money to deal with it. So don't let the problem stop you from making money. Because if the problem keeps stopping you from making money, you won't be able to deal with that problem. And it will persist. And whatever you permit is what persists. My God, I don't give you motivational quotes. <laughs> so guys, smile. Smile, okay? Smile. Either you're talking to a prospect online, offline, make sure you're smiling. The A is for ask questions. The A is for ask questions. A lot of salespeople, you don't sell because all you do is selling. Ah, yeah. You don't sell because all you do is selling. When you're talking to a prospect, you just want to talk. You just want to talk. Now you go just they talk. Guys, people are not interested. See, people don't love to buy. People don't love to be sold, but they love to buy. Nobody wants, even you, let me be honest with you. You don't like to, 
piece sold you like to buy you like it you will most likely buy something if you reached out to the vendor and you said this and the only thing the vendor is just send it to you send you price send your account number you pay and that's all but if you send the vendor please how much is this shoe and i'm telling you the shoe is extraordinary you can bounce with it you can dance with it you can i beg you. let's imagine that you sent two or three vendors the same message the one that responded with form four thousand account number you will close with that person faster so sometimes as a salesperson make sure you ask questions let customers talk about themselves these are some of the questions you can ask as a real estate salesperson ask your prospects if real estate investment is something they are looking to do right now it makes you know if they are your prospect for now or your prospect for later sir is real estate investment something you're looking to do right now they will say eh, i'm looking at next year december if you already know that this one is a prospect for next year december are you with me okay sir if you are buying why are you buying because if you have been honest as realtors you you and i know that we have some property that is inside bush and we have some that they can build in the next two years so if somebody says i'm looking for a place i can build in the next one year you already know the product to pitch to them and asking questions will make you not sell a product of two million to a 200 million client or sell a product of 200 million to a two million clients so ask questions People don't like to talk about their budget sometimes. Ask that, oh, oh my God, I'm telling you all these things for free. Or they shall say people are hearing I will charge you like 14 million for all this information. So this is how you ask people for their budget. Because if you come out rightly as budget, people will not want to fall into your hands, right? But you can say something like, you can say something like this as a realtor. I will say, so this is what I say. I say, sir, if you are to design the product you want to buy, what will it look like? I bet you, they will tell you uh, somewhere between two million and four million, um, somewhere not too far from the road, a place that is developing. They will tell you what they want, and all you need to do is to tailor your product to their need. That's care. You will just tailor your product to their need, but you wouldn't know that if all you do is what is talk. They are not asking questions. Ask the right questions. For some of you in this relation in, in relationships, this also applies to you. Ask the right questions. <laughs> Are they going smiling? Are they going smiling? All right. So yeah, ask questions. That's what the A is for. Then the L, the L is for listen. 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 Guys, when you ask, some people ask questions with the intention to answer. Don't ask questions because you want to answer. Ask questions because you want to listen. Look at this guy that told me about his son. If I didn't listen and internalize it, I wouldn't come about a solution. I listen. Imagine if I didn't care about his answer. Listen. Sometimes that's some of my clients right now, husband and wife will be fighting. I'm the one they will call because they know that I'm only listening. They will not know that I mean, I'm not doing my job listening when they wanted to buy land. People love people that listen to them. People love people they think listens to them. Listen. Someone is talking to you. Listen. Drop your phone. In fact, it is a table etiquette that when you are Either you're having lunch, dinner, or you're having a conversation, put your phone in your pocket or in your bag. Don't let it be in sight. Take your phone out of the picture. Listen, 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 listen. Do you know that many times it, this is what causes problems in relationships? Two people that talk too much and two of them are not listening. Your girlfriend will tell you, if only you listen to me. But I, I'm only hearing what you're saying, but you don't listen. Some girls too, they are so stubborn. They don't listen. So when it comes to your customers or your prospects, listen. Maintain eye contact. Let them know you are with them. Let them know you are with them. The worst part, you put your phone on your table. A customer is with you, talking to you. Your phone keeps ringing and you keep looking at it. You're not telling them, sir, no, sir, I, 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 I will not pick. A reasonable person will tell you, yeah, you can pick your phone, you can pick your See, you are disrupting the listening process. Always listen, guys. Always listen. Always listen. 
commit yourself to listening. Rehearse with your roommate, rehearse with your boss, rehearse with your colleague, rehearse with your fiance, your husband, your wife. Rehearse listening. Just tell yourself that for the next three, for the, somebody has said, men, listen to your babe. So, men, to catch yourself. Just tell yourself, for, throughout this weekend, I just want to listen. Guys, your life will change if you listen. And I'm not even capping. That everybody, anybody that is talking to you, you just want to listen. No, somebody say listen to money. Oh, wow. Listen, listen. When your customer is talking to you, listen. Because sometimes that's when they share their real concerns. That's when they share their concerns. Some people have been scammed before. And when they are talking to you, you just want to say to them, they tell you that, ah, I've been scammed before. You say, hey, sir, no, we, we, we are not like that. So, ah, no. Listen, when you listen, you're able to empathize with them. When a customer tells me they've had a bad experience in real estate, this is what I do. I use the feel felt found approach. The feel felt found approach is to say, I know how you feel. Many people have felt the same way before. But what they found out doing business with us is that we are different. What they found out doing business with us is that we do allocation quicker. What they found out doing business with us is that we are this and that. Imagine if I did, that person will feel like they've been listened to. Imagine I say, no, eh, no, sir, we are not like that. To, eh, we can take our social media, take us online. No, fam. Listen, listen, listen. So study the art of listening and your engaging game is going to go to the roof. Now, the last, the T, the T there, the T there is tell stories. As salespeople, you may not have stories to tell if you are new, right? But tell other people's stories. You may not have stories to tell if you are new, but tell other people's stories. Your MD has a lot of stories. I'm sure he shares with you every time he has meetings with you. Tell his story, right? Any story you've heard before, tell it. If you business a movie, tell the story. And guess what? That story I told you about, that story I told you about the guy that robs the bank is not true. It did not happen. But did I catch your attention? Somebody should comment. Did I catch your attention? Favor is a is, favor is a witch. She says she knew. Did I catch your attention? Yes, I got your attention because I told story. He said you would never kidnap me. <laughs> Because I told you a story. I told you a story. So somebody's on bottle of my tail. No, sir. I, I prefer one acre. <laughs> Guys, tell stories. Tell stories. See, you want to start a speech, tell stories. You want to start a meeting, tell stories. You are trying to convince a client. You realize that this person has trust issue. Just keep telling stories of your, your client's testimonies. Just keep, you know, um, that the, 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 there was this guy we allocated. It was his first time. Guy had a lot of doubts. But man, after the allocation, he was so excited. He brought his friend. You have told a story. Tell stories. People love to do things when they know other people are doing it. People love to do it, do things when they know other people are doing it. Tell stories, guys. Tell stories. Tell stories. It just depends on how much you're able to pump emotions into the stories you are telling. How much are you able in, in literature? So I studied literature in my A levels, right? And in literature, there's something called verisimilitude. Verisimilitude is your why your story has direct relationship with reality. That is, people can imagine it. It can go into the imagination of man. If I'm telling you a story right now, the story, well, the story I told you about my client who buys for his son is not a lie, right? But then, as I was telling you, you can imagine it. So tell stories that are captivating. Tell stories, tell stories, tell stories. So we've spoken about lead generation, right? We've spoken about engagement. Then the next thing I want to tell you about, okay, referrals, I've spoken about referrals already. Next thing I want to talk about is conversion. People of God, see, every time I've been saying this morning, Every time I've been saying this morning, if you are just with clients and they've not done transfer, 
is just is just story. See, transaction successful is the cocoa of why we are here. If client never pay, na gist, na the gist. So how do you get your client to pay? Um, I, I I explained this in my book, and like always, you guys know I love, I love, I love, I love, I love, um, I love acronyms, right? So I call it the Wale Agda model. Wale Agda model. That's A C D A. You can write it down. A C D A. 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 Now, ACDA, the first A is for attention. The first A is for attention. Before you close a man, make sure you have his attention. I won't be talking to a customer that in the background. I know he's talking to someone else. No, sir. Okay, have your attention. Those guys in traffic, do you know that they sell some things to you? You don't need it. But because they got your attention, the moment you look at them and they come to your door, sir, it's good. This the way you can use it to, to clean shit, clear your face, clear your... Before you know, you will not realize that I need face to wear. <laughs> Before you know, you've bought it. Do you know sometimes I look at my car and I realize that and I realize that I bought something I did not need. I bought a frame one day. The guy got my attention. I bought it. I got to my house. I saw that there's no space to put the frame. I got to my house. I saw that there's no space to put the frame. <laughs> because it got my attention. When you want to close people, get their attention. Captivate their attention. That is why marketing is an attention cultivating strategy. By the attention you generate online, somebody can just come to your DM and pay. You may not need to talk much. So captivate attention. Let me say this here. For many of you that create a lot of content, our time is fast spent. For many of you that create a lot of content, also understand your audience. There are three types of audience. We have the unaware audience, we have the problem aware audience, and we have the solution aware audience. The unaware audience are people that is their first time investing, or even if they've invested before, they don't understand real estate. So when you are doing a video and you are explaining 300 square meter is a dimensional something, so they don't understand, they are lost. That's why some people will come to your DM and say, can you explain this thing to me where? So there is, you need to now make knowledge. In my book, I explained that sales is educational. When you educate people about what they want to buy, they make informed decisions. They make informed decisions, right? So that's for, for, for the um, the customers that are not aware. Then we have the problem aware customers. These ones, they know they should not put their money in the bank. They are the ones that get scammed. The problem aware, because they just know that I should not put this money in the bank. So any investment that is shown to them, like this 10%, 20%, they print it and put it there. They, they know it is a problem to put their money in the bank. Do you get? But they don't know where to put the money. You can reach out to the, the Odisha team. They will get across on how you can get a copy of my book. I just say it, 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 it. So, yeah. Problem aware. They know it's a problem to keep money. But they are wrong, they are investing in the wrong things. So when you want to talk to these people, tell them on how to separate real estate investment from forex investment. Tell them how real estate investment is longer, is, is more secure and all of that. Do you get? Those are the kind of content that speaks to them. Then we have the solution aware customer. This one, he knows about real estate. You just need to convince him that your product is the best product. You just need to convince him not to buy another person's product, but to buy your product. The content you give those kind of person are content that, that retrain their trust. So when next you are doing your content planning, make sure that if you drop content three times in a week, make sure you have one for the problem aware, you have one for the unaware, and you have one for the solution aware. That's a little bit of digression. So let's go back. A is for attention. Make sure you captivate attention, right? Then the C. The C here, the C here is for curiosity. Curiosity is when you want people to know more. You've given them a little bit of information. This is called the, 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 the suya approach. A suya man will give you suya to taste. Because he knows that you can't eat that suya and not buy. It's not possible. You can imagine that if I add something to sell to you people, if I have a paid event that is coming, and I tell you that, guys, go and pay 200 k for my class that is happening next week. After I've given you this tip of the iceberg, 
many of you will go and look for it. If you don't have the money, you will borrow it. Are you with me? That is because I'm giving you this. So curiosity is saying information that will make people want to hear more. Look at what I said when I'm prospecting. So I remember there was a time I was selling house. I was selling houses in the Brahma Desoya. And I would, if I'm prospecting, I would just tell the man that, sir, I can get you a house of 15 million. And you ask, you can even pay for 18 months. And this house is going to make you 5 million naira yearly. The next question they will ask is how. And I will tell them it may not be a good place to talk. Can we fix a meeting in my office? Or I come to you by your office in my team. Do you get? That is a bit of curiosity. That meeting will most likely happen because this man wants to hear. So people will tell you in this Lagos, is it possible? Yeah, let's talk about it. Do you get? Another way you can do that is to, there's something in sales called super indirect. Super indirect is to tell somebody, you want to close them, but you tell them, sir, I don't know if you have somebody who has like one million right now and they are willing to invest it. That in the next 10 years, if you give them nothing less than 30 million, they say, oh, okay. Can you tell me more about it? You are closing them super indirectly. My God, people will pay for all this money. So yeah, um, that is curiosity. When you when you want people to yearn for more, right? That's curiosity. Then the D is for desire. The D is for desire. Sales is sweeter when you arouse people's desire. When you arouse people's desire. See, by the time you arouse people's desire, they want your products more than they want their money. That is what makes people do transfer. I tell salespeople, especially real estate salespeople, that see, guys, real estate is not something that people, if they don't buy real estate, you know they will not die. So real estate purchase is an emotional decision. The fact that they believe that they are giving you your money, their money right now, and in the next five years, they have a land that they can convert to much more money. You need to arouse their desire to a point where they want when movies are coming to the cinema, this is the exact approach that they use. They arose our desire so much. All of us are looking at the date. On the day of the premiere, you will see the cinemas. Pass. Cinema that I've wanted to see a movie before on this island. And I went to every cinema, everywhere it's put. That movie did a massive PR. Because they arose everybody's desire. At the end of the day, it was a shitty movie. But they arose our desire. They made the money. So make sure you arose people's desire. Always tell them the always tell them the benefits, not the features. Benefit of a man is that the man is strong. The man has two legs. I mean, features of a man is that the man is strong. He has two legs. He has two hands. He has a head. But benefit of a man is that he's caring. Is this? Is that? When you are pitching your products, pitch benefits and not just features. How can this product make more money for me? How can this product make me use today's convenience to secure tomorrow's luxury? How can this product help me achieve my dreams? How can this product fit into my portfolio? That is what you should talk about in arousing desire. Then the last thing is to ask them to take action. Like I said earlier, when somebody wants to buy one plot, I tell them why to buy two plots. I tell them why to buy three plots. Sometimes, even if it's over a chart, and it's all right, I want to make payments. Even though, even though, me and the person have only been talking about two plots. Two plots. And when it comes to the time they want to make payments, there's something I call upselling, downselling, and mid-selling. Is that I say, all right, so sir, now that you're making the buying decision, would you consider buying two plots, four plots, or six plots? Usually, if you've arose their desire very well, they will not want to fall your hand. So they will not go for two plots. They will go for four plots. Believing that they can achieve it, um, that they can afford it. If they can't afford the highest, they won't go for six plots. I saw to a guy recently, he wanted to buy one plot. I got him to buy eight plots. By the time I was building his curiosity and arousing his desire, we we're talking about one acre. So that's six plots. And I closed him at one acre and he was going to pay. And I said, I think that if you can do six plots, you can do eight plots. But sometimes some people even just do two acres, right? But let me know, do you still want to stick to the one acre, eight plots, or two acres? And the guy said, um, I think I'll just do the eight plots. I think it's safer for me. And he made payment, and that was it. Conversion. Conversion. Getting them to take action. That's the last A. Action. Ask for the money. Since people, you are done talking. You will now be expecting that the customer will ask you, how can I pay? You ask them, so are you doing tech or transfer? In fact, there's something called closing before starting a sale. 
closing before starting a sale is whenever I'm taking a customer to my site, I tell them that, sir, please come with your token or your checkbook. Are you with me? They smile and say, ha ha. But in their subconscious, they already know that before it is suffering, because when I get to site, I must pay. Do you get? I jokingly told the client one day that ah, when we go to site like this, if you do not pay, I will just leave you in a pay. You will carry you baba. And the man say, ah, I know you will not do that. Do you get? I'm telling you that you must pay. And sometimes I tell my clients that, sir, if the transaction goes well, and I'm away from a pay, in fact, there's a place where we buy food, but the food is only for our clients that are paid. If they do not pay on site, I will still take them and buy that food. But when they get to their house, they will still stick, they will keep thinking about it because that food we took them did not buy. And I'll wrap this this class up by explaining what I call emotional bank account. Emotional bank account is how you carry your transactions from not just transactions but taking it to relationship level, right? Emotional bank account is EBA, EBA, short thing EBA, just EBA, right? EBA, emotional bank account. When you've sold to somebody once, invest in their emotional bank account little by little. Buy them at times sometimes. If they have an event and you are invited, go there. Make sure, make them see that you are interested in a relationship with them and not just the transaction with them. So invest in people's emotional bank account so that the day you want to make a withdrawal is going to be a big, big withdrawal. There was something I did. Um, um, anytime any of my guys are doing events, I, I decide to be a part of it. Right, you are doing. No matter how busy I get, I create time to be a part of it, and it has, it has created, it has paved ways, right? Because people love when, for example, your your relationship started as a business relationship, but it's ending as a good relationship, and they're going to value you more and not just see you as their realtor, right? Then the last thing I will say here is also that sales, sales is sales is spiritual, right? In everything I have said, make sure that you have a Sometimes some people have said they will pay and they are not paying. Choose their name inside prayer. Choose their name inside prayer because you know what? If they don't buy from you, they will buy from someone else. So to that customer, for example, they will still become a landlord, but they've not become the landlord through you. That is why I'm wearing this shirt. That God did it, but not me use. God did it, but not me use. God can do it for you too and let him use me too to make you a realtor. Thank you. Wow, wow, wow. Can we celebrate <laughs> Dr. Wale? <laughs> wow. I told you guys not to afraid to mess us up tonight, but God did for us. Amazing. <laughs> Let's celebrate Dr. Wale. Oh my God. Oh my God. Tonight was explosive. How do you feel tonight? How do you feel right now? How do you feel right now? Oh my God, let's celebrate Dr. Wale in the chat box. Let's celebrate him. That is super amazing. My book is filled up. My book is filled up. Thank you so much for that amazing session, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. All right. Now, uh, please, we'll be taking just two or three questions before we call it a wrap tonight because we want to end at exactly 10 p.m., please. So if you have any question, I'll just pick two, three questions for tonight before we call it a wrap. Thank you so much, Dr. Wally, for that session. Thank you so much, sir. So if you have any question, please ask in the chat box. I'll pick just two or three questions so we can call it a wrap tonight. And don't forget, after this session, before the end of the session, make sure you take a screenshot of this interface. Please tag Odisha Reuters Academy, tag our tutor for tonight, and tag Odisha Properties. For putting this together. So, Dr. Luwale, please help us put your um, Instagram handle in the chat box for people, please, sir. Your Instagram handle. You can help us put it in the chat box. So, take a screenshot of this interface, post on your Instagram story, share every of the things you've learned from tonight's session. Tag the two, our tutor for tonight. Tag Odisha Realtors Academy. Tag Odisha Properties for putting all of this together. Very important. We'll repost as many as possible. Don't forget, take a screenshot of this interface. Take a screenshot of this interface. Take a screenshot of this interface. Write down all of the things you've learned from this session. Write it out. Then tag our tutor for tonight at Wolefakonda on Instagram. Tag us on your, on your story. Tag um, Odisha Realtors Academy, tag Odisha Property, who is sponsoring this um, session. Please, if you have any questions, let's ask. 
So we can um, ask our, um, our tutor for tonight. Just two or three questions, I'll just pick those two or three. Yes, please. So please, I'm waiting for a question. Thank you so much, Dr. Wally. That session was powerful. That session was amazing. If you're not on this call right now, oh my God, then you've missed a lot. You've missed a lot. So we have the recording of this session streaming live on YouTube. So after this session, important, important, please go on our YouTube channel. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you like. I can see a lot of people's comments on our YouTube page. Please drop everything you're learning. You can drop them in the comment section on YouTube. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube page. Make sure you like the post. And you can always listen to the recording, watch the recording again and again and again and again and again. Tonight, oh my God, tonight is a banger. Yes, thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much for this amazing time. So do we have any questions before we call it a wrap tonight? We have just 15 minutes more to the head of this class for tonight. We'll continue again tomorrow. You know how we do it already. And today is day five and we have five more days to go. You know, if the five can be like this, oh my God. Oh, there are some people that have been joining this call from Monday. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. You guys are the real MVP. At the end of this training, all participants will be given a free verified certificate and will be having a physical graduation ceremony. For everyone who is not in Lagos, Nigeria, for everyone joining us from diaspora, don't worry. In as much as you've been joining the class since on Monday, your e-copy certificate will be sent to your email. It will be sent to your email, and that is for people who have been joining the class and they've been active. So, Dr. Wally, I think I have a question for you here from Mayowa. And the question is, when starting out, how did you get to build credibility? When people ask about your track record at all, how do you respond convincingly? How do you get to build your credibility? Thank you, sir. Um, thank you very much for that question. And this is an important question that I need, I, I think it needed to be asked, right? So many times, I think a lot of realtors don't stay one place. They don't stay one place and you don't know what it's doing to you. I don't know if you've rented a house before in Lagos. All of those agents, God forgive me, you're an agent. You realize that their life probably has nothing to write on about, right? Because they're always everywhere, they're here and there. Um, something that helped me build credibility was the company I was selling for when I was an undergraduate was the same company I sold for for about four years. So by the time I left school, I joined the company. I kept selling for them. People came to me with um, requests that they wanted to buy something else. Well, sometimes when I think about it, I'm like, maybe I should have taken those requests, right? But it's something I, there's a friend of mine at the time who was selling other products at the Shewa. I would always refer those clients to him and say, okay, I don't sell it. My company doesn't sell it. Take me and him, we even share commission, even though he's my client. Do you get that kind of thing? So make sure that you stay true to one brand. Now, for some of you, you want to sell for all the brands. No. Now, if you're an independent realtor, pick one or two brands that people will know that just these two brands this guy is selling for. Pick one brand. They know that this brand, so you carry it on your head, it builds credibility. Many times, if people see that, you post this one today, you post that one, that one tomorrow. They can't trust you with their money. Real estate is not is not planting on chips. Do you get it? It's something that people really need to know that they can trust you with their funds. So I think that um I think that I think that that is one of the things that honestly helped me while I was while I started out as a realtor. Stay committed to one brand and one brand alone. Right? That's one. Then two, um, two is stay consistent stay consistent sometimes you don't feel like it you can ask um right shakoni sometimes even as md it doesn't feel like it sometimes i don't feel like it but life is not about how you feel you need to get done what you need to get done you get doesn't matter how you feel so some always just show up always show up many times your the gold is in the consistency the gold is in the consistency just keep at it just keep at it in fact sometimes i tell some realtors Right, I'm te I tell some realtors, if you don't want to sell for me, don't sell for me. Face the company you are selling for and say your success is my priority. You get sell and make good money. Stop confusing your customers. 
right? You want to sell for so usually stick to a brand or two that you want to sell for. Stick to them. Let people identify you with them. Let the MGs of those brands be able to stand for you. Do you get that? No, man. This is my person. Do you get? And also, um, and also, um, stay consistent. Stay consistent. Don't don't sell real estate today and sell cars tomorrow, or sell real estate today and sell a week tomorrow. If you have a week, use a different line, line a different page, everything. But when you're selling real estate, just stay consistent. Let people be able to build um track record of excellence with you and consistency. Trust me, people are not going to leave. People don't leave people they think are ground in their game. Now, for example, I started selling real estate 2017. That's that's six years now, right? I have some my 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 first ever customer is still my customer to you today. Wow, you get really? because 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 I built so there has been consistency over time. The guy can tell, and a lot of people who were broke that time now that they have money, yeah, I'm the only person they are thinking about. So and this wow. because they are because if at some point they've seen me post, um, I'm selling USD two, or I'm selling something, something, they would not have bought from me. So stay You're right, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, please, can we celebrate um, Dr. Wally in the chat box? What do we say to Dr. Wally for tonight? Thank you so much, sir. We really appreciate your time. We, we've gained so much. We've learned so much from this session. So before we call it a wrap tonight, because we are just ending in a very few minutes, then let us say a big thank you to Dr. Wally for that session. Let's celebrate Dr. Wally. Let's celebrate the team of Audacia Properties, the management team for putting this together. Let's celebrate them, please. Very, very important. Please remember to take a screenshot of this interface right now because I'll be ending this call like shortly. Take a screenshot of this, of this interface. Go on your Instagram story. Write every of the things you've learned tonight. Tag our tutor for tonight, Walifa Kunga, on Instagram. Tag Audacia Realtors Academy and tag our sponsor, who is um, Audacia Properties. Thank you so much for joining tonight's session. We go again tomorrow. And tomorrow is really going to be an amazing, amazing, amazing time. So this session is streaming live on YouTube. So after this session tonight, ensure you go back to YouTube to catch up with the session again. Listen, listen, and listen again. If you're just joining us for this for the first time tonight and you're not in our WhatsApp community, please, I'm dropping a link again in the chat box. Copy the link, fill in your information so you can be part of the community. Please, very important we have your information with us. Very, very important. At the end of this training, everyone will get a certificate. Very important. So make sure you fill that form. On Instagram, follow us, follow us on Instagram at Audacia Realtors Academy. We have the link also in bio. Very important. So we go again tomorrow. I really want to say a very big thank you to everyone who has been joining us since on Monday. And to those who could not join today for one reason or the other, please do well to listen to the recording. Very, very important to listen to the recording. Thank you so much once again for joining the meeting tonight. We continue again tomorrow and all other conversation will go ahead in the community. Thank you and see you all tomorrow. Bye for now.